We're joined now by the former central bank governor of Afghanistan, Ajmal Ahmadi. Ajmal, thank you very much indeed for joining me. So this seems, at least on face value, to be a very different Taliban to the one that we saw 20 years ago and before. They're talking here about engaging with the wider community. They're talking about women's rights. They're talking about inclusivity. Can we trust them? Thank you very much for having me on your program. Uh, it's something that I think everyone hopes uh, they will implement, but we have to take them on their actions. And uh, there's been evidence, for example, during the negotiations that they made many promises but have not held up those promises. So thus far, uh, their words don't match their actions, so there is reason for um, uh, being tentative or, or not believing their words just quite yet. Um, the Taliban said today that they had intended to stay outside of Kabul and to wait there uh, until the Afghan government came out to greet them and to do a, a formal handover, if you will. But instead, President Ghani fled the country, is currently who knows where. Why do you think the Taliban couldn't successfully do business with the government? It began with the negotiated agreement between the US and the Taliban, which ex excluded the Afghan government from the process. From that stage forward, then, they had no interest or uh, reason to engage with the Afghan government. They're saying, aren't they, that they want to create law and order. That's one of the big messages that came out today, as well as engaging with the wider community. They're saying, we are now the party of law and order. We're the government of law and order. But the previous government, Ashraf Ghani's government, he also said he was the government of law and order, but never managed it in the slightest, did he? Do you think the Taliban can succeed where President Ghani couldn't? I think, I think there was conflict, and in that stage, I think it's um, unfair to say that he wasn't able to. Um, there, there was a, a, an environment in which conflict ensued. And I think there, um, perhaps the Taliban will be able to implement law and order, but the question is what type of law and order, how will it be implemented? We saw evidence of how they implemented that in the 90s, and the, question, the key question is whether they seek to implement law and order using those mechanisms or whether they have really changed and will implement it um, using different methods. Now, you, of course, are, were an advisor to President Ghani. Um, how do you think he will be viewing what's happened over the last couple of days? I think the speed at which this transition happened has shocked everyone, um, whether you're outside of the country or whether you're inside or even part of the government. Uh, just. Four days ago, major cities were still under the control of the government. Uh, work was still being, uh, common daily work was still being moved forward. I still was at my office on Sunday morning um, uh, managing central bank work. So I think the speed of the transition has just been shocking. Uh, I did not have communication with him about his plans. I was disappointed at the, the way that the departure held uh, was held. I was at the airport when I found out that the president had already left. Uh, so in that way, I think it was disappointing. Uh, president Ghani is certainly taking a lot of flack, particularly from the US, isn't he? They've been saying today that, you know, this isn't our fault, this is the fault of the Afghan government and accusing them of corruption. This is coming from the US, it's coming from the EU as well. Is that how you see it? I would frame it as uh, medium-term issues, structural issues, and, and the immediate uh, fallout. I, I think the immediate fallout, you could, you could blame uh, both the Afghan government for not being prepared for evacuation of, of personnel or having contingency plans in place, uh, just as you can blame international partners for not having adequate plans to evacuate their citizens. Uh, the medium-term structural issue was that an agreement was signed between the U.S. and the Taliban, which excluded the Afghan government. So you can say that corruption was there, it was prevalent, but typically corruption uh, is prevalent in a number of countries around the world, and you don't see those governments falling. So you have to, you have to take that as one aspect of a larger structural issue. Ajmal Ahmadi, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Thank you for having me.